Hi, my name is Ben Christensen, and I'm going to be going through how I created these magical combat effects using Houdini and Unreal. I should mention that if you download my scene files, you'll notice that none of the characters have animations on them, and that's because the animations are from this superhero animations pack that I got from the Unreal Marketplace. You don't need this pack in order to do these tutorials or to even view the effects, but just if you want to see these animations, this is where you can get them. The other thing is I use a lot of textures from this Luos Free Texture Pack. So you can get these here as well, and they are also unnecessary for doing this tutorial or viewing the project files, but I just wanted you to know where I got these textures. Okay, the last thing is that this is not a beginner tutorial. If you don't know anything about Blueprints or Niagara, then you're gonna be very confused throughout this tutorial. So keep that in mind going forward. So first I'm gonna show you how I created the rocks that are used in the combat effects scene. I just set up first a sphere. I increased the rows a bit and I made it a bit smaller. Then I'm going to uh, displace those points a bit with a mountain and just change this so we have a more rough texture so it looks a bit more like a rock. And then I put down an RUD material fracture because I want to make this look like a cracked surface. I want this rock to kind of look like a broken up geode or something. So I break up these points, I break this up and I have just 15 points. And then I added some edge detail and some interior detail. And you'll see where I'm going with this. And when I put down an exploded view, then we've suddenly broken up this rock and you can see all the different parts uh, or pieces that I have here. But I don't want this to be broken up uniformly. I want this some of the pieces to be kind of connected and just offset it a bit. So I drop down another mountain. You can see my settings here. And now they're kind of like merged together a bit in some weird ways, but this looks a bit strange. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down a VDB from polygons. This is going to make this one, uh, this, and then when we convert it back, it's going to allow it to be just one single mesh again, instead of all the separated pieces. So I turn it into a VDB and then I turn it back into a polygon. But now this is way too high, too, way too many polygons. So then I put down a poly reduce. So now we have a broken up kind of lower poly geode here. And the idea behind me creating these different pieces and breaking it up is the inside of this will be kind of hollow. So now when we take this inside of Unreal and we put a light in here, the light is actually gonna shine through some of these cracks. It's not perfectly hollow, but it's enough so that when we put the light in here, some of these cracks will have a nice light as if the inside of this is glowing really hot. Then I set up my normals. And then the next thing that this transform doesn't have anything, but then I set down a auto UV. And this is actually what we're gonna use for the mesh or the object that we're gonna bring inside of Unreal. So all I did is right click, save as geometry, call it whatever, and then you're gonna export this as an OBJ and bring this inside of Unreal. And that's gonna be our low poly mesh that we're gonna use. But we still need to set up a texture so that we can create the ins, uh, um, kind of a mask for the inside of these pieces and we can make that emissive later uh, inside of Unreal. So let's put down a remesh grid. Now this is very high polygon. And then Set the color to be black and mask by ambient occlusion. And we're basically creating a mask that is gonna allow us to color the inside of these little pieces that we created earlier. These are my settings. And then we're gonna blur it a bit because we want them to be kind of blurred out and we don't want them to be have hard edges or anything. And then I'm gonna set them to be white. I'm gonna set the mask that we've created with the mask ambient occlusion to be white, just like this. So now you can see what we're going for. We're gonna get a texture that we can use to make the inside of these pieces more emissive. So it's like inside of our rock is, is glowing. And then we're gonna transfer these attributes. And since this is really high poly, we can transfer the attributes and then we're gonna bake out that color. So you can render it wherever you want. 
and then you just need to take the image that you're getting out of the color and bring that into Unreal. So we're going to get a texture and then we're going to use that texture to set up the material for this. Also, be sure to turn on the thickness. This is just going to give us a texture so we can add some variation to the color here. It's not going to make a big difference, but it's just going to give us a little bit more detail. So you're going to bring this vertex color and the thickness. You're going to hit render. You can render this straight into the contents folder, or you can just take the images out of here and drop them into your contents folder after you render. But either way, let's render this, bring this into our Unreal project, and start setting up our material. As you can see, we have the stones color that is made using the ambient occlusion mask that we made inside of Houdini. I'm tinting that slightly blue, I'm multiplying it by 3000, and I'm putting that into our emissive color. That's giving us these really bright uh, inside crack edges. And then I'm also using this, this thickness map to just give us some color variation on the different parts of the rock. And you set that up in the material instance. So I have color A, color B, and then we'll set that up inside the material instance for just slightly different shades of blue. Again, this is hardly gonna be noticeable. How hardly gonna be noticeable this is going to be really bright on our stones, so a lot of the color, uh, a lot of the color and subsurface stat scattering will hardly be noticeable. And then down here we have uh, an HDRI and setting up some fake specularity. I highly recommend the tutorial by Kurt Cusper. He kind of goes over some different stone material techniques for UE4 shaders. I'm using some of those techniques here. So once you have the thickness and your color and everything's set up, then you can make a material instance of this. So here's our material instance. As you can see, it's glowing just like the master material. And we need to set up the blue of, of the rocks. So you can see my color values here. And as you can see, they're just a little bit different shades of blue for each one. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of variation when we look at our material on our rocks. It's not gonna make that much of a difference, but you can copy my values if you like. And then we need to create a blueprint for these. And the blueprint is going to control everything our rocks do. It's going to control the explosions. It's going to control a huge uh, majority of this effect. So I'm just going to open up my blueprint and I can show you what I have here. I've just had our stone and I've just rotated it slightly so that we have, it looks like they're different and not just the same stone rotated. So yeah, I just rotated the stone. I applied the glowing rock instance that we've just created and it works. These rocks are glowing a bit from the edges, just like how we planned. You can see how, kind of how that looks. Just kind of a low poly stone that's meant to fly around and to cause some destruction. So inside here, if you actually look, these are both parented to a sphere just in the middle. So all I did here is go to add, and I just created a collision, a sphere collision, just like this. And I used, and I parented these stones to it and then move them slightly away so that if I move this middle, if I move this sphere that's down here, if I move this sphere, these two will rotate because they're parented to this. See? And we're going to use this later to make the stones uh, circle around each other and also change in distance. And as you can see, if you look at my stone, it has a light inside it, which I was talking about earlier. And you, as you can see, it's not very bright right now. It's barely glowing at all. You can see the reflection right on the ground there. And if you look, the intensity is just at one. So I've set that to zero. This little light will disappear just like that. So all I did to do that is I went here and I created a point light. Point light. And as you see now, it's really, really bright. And the reason that mine isn't bright is because I want to control the intensity of this light within our blueprint. I'll show you how I did that. If you go into the event graph, you can see that I have a bunch of stuff set up, but I'm using this to control the timing. So inside this sequence here, you can see that I have a timeline, which goes from zero, where mine was at one, and over the course of two seconds, it goes all the way to 50,000 brightness. That's really, really bright. And after about two seconds, that's when they're gonna reach their full brightness. So, and, and then I have set intensity and this intensity is the intensity of both these lights. So these two light bulbs are the lights inside these rocks. So over two seconds, these will reach their full brightness. The last part of these stones and the runes is these light rays that are coming out of these cracks. And for this, all I have set up is a material that has a depth fade and a mask like this. And I'm just gonna kinda 
breeze through this really quickly, show you some of the nodes that I've placed here using camera vectors so we don't get any weird angles from the side. And I have a radial gradient exponential so that I can mask out around it so we're not getting any weird edges. Depth fade so when we get too far away this isn't going to be visible. And then I have the color as a parameter so I can control my param if control it from the material instance and brightness to control how bright it is. Here's my material instance. This is all it looks like. And again, I'm just using a kind of a triangle mesh on each of these, on just different points here. I'm just placing this along here to give kind of a fake brightness. So I have like basically three layers of brightness to these rocks, which is the inside has a light inside that's gonna affect our scene. The edges have a very emissive material. So it looks like it's, uh, so it looks like the inside is glowing and there's different parts of this. And then I also have little meshes placed around the cracks of these rocks so that it looks like light is shining through like these gob rays and now this isn't the best practice i have many different meshes here going along the edges and i wanted to see if this would work but in the future i would make this all one mesh coming out of here and i think i could clean it up a bit so but that's just how i set up these up